supposing I consider my problem as resource constrained minimum latency scheduling. Okay. If it is resource constrained minimum latency, then one thing I can say for sure, if I just put the maximum latency, this value over here as 5, then I am looking at the minimum theoretical latency, right. In other words, I am basically targeting the critical path itself, there is obviously no way I can go below that. But then it probably does not make sense to talk about a resource constraint, I cannot really put a resource constraint on it, okay. Uh, yeah, whereas if I change the problem around a little bit and say, okay, rather than 5, I go up to some lambda plus 1, right, where what is lambda, it could be 10, it could be 20, it could be some number that I just come up with, okay. I only need to make sure that it is sufficiently large that I can guarantee that there will be a solution with the resource constraints that I am applying right and then basically try and solve for it. So, for example, let us say that can you think of a value of lambda for which no matter what my resource constraint, I will always be able to schedule this. There should be at least one time step for every operation, right. So, lambda equal to 11 is sufficient. As long as lambda is at least 11, it means that no matter which way you schedule the operations, I have enough time to schedule all the operations, because any operation once scheduled finishes within one clock cycle, you need delay, right. So, lambda equal to 11 or in other words, the sum of the execution times of all the units essentially corresponds to putting all of them on a single processor, okay. Lambda equal to 4, so that lambda plus 1 equal to 5 is the minimum possible, that is the critical path, okay. And lambda equal to let us say 6 or 8 or something of that sort will give me something in between. It might allow me to do it with fewer resources than the ASAP or ALAP schedule, but at the same time I may not be able to bring it all the way down to a single resource. In fact, I cannot bring it down to a single resource, okay. So, as long as I can choose some value of lambda, choose a sufficiently large lambda, right. And then what should my cost function be? This should be the actual latency, right. So, the cost function that I am trying to optimize is the actual latency after scheduling all the operations, right. Assuming that all the constraints have been satisfied, okay. How do I find this latency? Given all the indicator variables that I have over here, is there some expression that I can write which would actually give me the latency? Exactly, right. I am basically interested in T12. That is when the dummy operation is scheduled, right and T12 itself I have an expression for that, okay. So, I can basically write down a cost function. This is also a linear combination of the xi variables now, right. So, my cost function itself. So, now let us go back and look briefly at these. The first expression summation xij over all j is equal to 1. That is a linear combination of the xij's, it is just a summation, right. Linear combination means some ai times a i j x i j summation of a i j x i j for overall j or i or whatever it is, right, should be less than or equal to some value, some constant. That is a set, is a, is an example of a linear constraint or a linear inequality. In this case, it is a linear equality. This one, the data task dependencies that I have over here is actually a set of linear inequalities, right the summation L x j L minus summation L x i L must be greater than or equal to 1. That is once again a linear combinations of the x i j's must be greater than or equal to or I could equivalently write it as must be less than or equal to 
some constant where again the constant is independent of the x i j values. Okay. The resource constraint also has the same kind of behavior right the summation of x i j is over i that is over all the operations for a given time step must be less than or equal to the resource total resource maximum resource constraint. Okay. So, I have got a set of linear inequalities and I have got, got a cost function which is again a linear combination of the x i j's. So, effectively what I have is a linear program which says optimize the cost function while satisfying all the inequalities. Equalities I am treating as a special case of inequalities right I mean you can it is essentially a slightly tighter constraint, but it is a constraint nevertheless the same kind of behavior. Okay. And in general for a linear program this is fine we know methods for solving it right in school you would probably have come across this thing called the simplex method. The simplex method is the most common method used for solving linear programs right you essentially construct some kind of a polytope right a intersection of planes usually we would do it for like two variables. So, you can actually do it graphically find out the intersection points over there one of those has to be the optimum etcetera etcetera standard method is there. Okay. There is one catch the catch over here is the x i j's have to be integers. Okay. So, the additional constraint is x i j's must take on integer values in particular they should actually be 0 1 right either 0 or 1, but it turns out that even if you relax that constraint that they should be exactly 0 or 1 and just allow them to be integers the behavior is pretty much the same right you can still solve the problem in the same way. More importantly it turns out that integer linear programming where you have this constraint that your variables that you are solving for have to be integers is an NP hard problem. And in general the word used for that is to say that there it is a intractable problem. Intractable is just a word used to indicate that this is computationally hard it is not that it is impossible to solve you can, but the time taken for it is very likely to run into exponential time uh, relative to the cost of the operations that you have and the number of operations that you have. Okay. So, then why did we go through this why did we you know basically go about this entire scheduling problem and try to cast it as an integer linear program simple reason it is basically to show that this is a very general framework. Okay. I can take on pretty much any kind of set of operations number of time steps dependencies etcetera and frame an appropriate set of constraints that need to be solved. Okay. What I have talked about over here is the so called resource constraint minimum latency scheduling problem. There is a dual problem of that which is latency constraint minimum resource. Okay. So, over there what I would do is my cost function rather than saying I want to minimize the latency would actually say I want to minimize the maximum r j that I get at any given point in time. Okay. So, effectively the maximum value of r j must be minimized that is the minimum resource subject to a latency constraint. Both of those problems can be solved more or less in the same framework by appropriately defining a cost. Right? If you think about it a bit further you will realize that that constraint that we put in for unit delay essentially says makes life easier in terms of writing these constraints, but if I wanted to say it is not unit delay I can still take that into account pretty much what I would say over here is in this place. I could insert a non unit delay and it would take care of that. The problem is counting the number of resources that are used in a given time step becomes a bit more tricky. Because in the present formulation I could just basically do a summation on a given time step find out which are all the x i j's that are non zero add them up and that tells me how many resources are active. In the general case if a resource has been scheduled at time x i j 
then it is busy from time x i j up to x i j plus d i minus 1, where d i is the delay of operation i, right. So, let us say it takes 3 clock cycles, x i j, x i j plus 1, x i j plus 2 are all busy, okay. In spite of all that, those are at the end of the day, those are complications, but they are not impossible to capture as constraints, they can be done, okay. Bottom line is this is a very general kind of framework that can be extended to almost any kind of scheduling problem and once you can pose the problem in this way, if you are able to solve it, it actually gives you the optimal solution, okay. The problem is ILP itself is intractable, therefore there is no guarantee that you will be able to find an optimal solution fast, but it is still a very valuable way of sort of posing a problem both to understand what makes it hard as well as what are the ways by which you might go about solving it if you had the time and the patience to actually go through with it.